please give it up for Brian Bucalaire. How you doing? All right, good, huh? All right, good. Yeah, me too. I'll tell you what, it's a great night for me, folks. Tonight I'm celebrating 16 months of being smoke free. You know, the last time I got a clap that bad, it was attached to my ex wifes snatch. <laughs> what the fuck? Let's try that again, okay? 16 months, smoke free, baby. There you go. And that includes tobacco. I'll tell you what, it's really hard to quit smoking, folks, I know. I was constantly making up every excuse just to have, you know, one more. Uh, my best excuse was, I don't smoke when I drink. I became a raging alcoholic after that. <laughs> you know, I bring beers in the bathroom with me just so I can take an enjoyable shit. I was pouring uh, beer in my breakfast cereal, you know, just so I could have that morning cigarette. You know, snap, crackle, and <clears throat> You know, I used to keep a bottle of Jack Daniels by the bed for that after-sex cigarette. Wine if I had company. Because I'm a guy. You gotta do it right. And I was uh, partying backstage with Ozzy Osbourne, and uh, even he was like, you see motherfucking, why don't you try a goddamn Pepsi or something? Oh, uh, he had problems. Things got so bad, I started carrying around a flask with me. You know, in case I wanted to have a smoke when I was driving. <laughs> no, no, no. That's just wrong. I used to use a plastic thermos instead. <laughs> Now, it's hard to quit smoking cigarettes, it really is. The, the trick to uh, quitting successfully, though, is to find other things to occupy your time, like uh, porn. <laughs> Works great for about 10 minutes, and then the urge comes back. So <laughs> you gotta find something that's you know, more tailored to you. And for me, it was karaoke. Yeah. You guys ever, oh, you know this? <laughs> karaoke, yeah. This was great, man. Sing a couple of songs, I feel like a rock star get a little ass at the end of the night. Not bad. I enjoyed it so much, I actually decided to host my own karaoke show. That is until I realized I was becoming the leader of a fucking cult. <laughs> and I don't know if you know this or not, karaoke is a fucking cult, man. <laughs> These people would follow me around, I swear to God, from bar to bar, night after night, week after week, singing the same terrible shit in all new terrible fucking ways. <laughs> I mean, they, they were terrible. They made that little Chinese bastard from American Idol sound like fucking Sinatra. <laughs> Remember that guy, you know? She bang, she bang. Nobody's banging any of these crazy fucks, believe me. <laughs> and I tell you what, I'll show these people a fucking cult. If I hear one more couple sing Summer Nights from Greece, <laughs> I'm gonna just, you know, pull a Waco, Texas and just burn the fuckers up. <laughs> I, I can't take that shit no more. I mean, halfway through, I'm sitting there like, holy shit, shut the fuck up! Jesus Christ. Here, drink this Kool-Aid. I'll show him a fucking cult, man. Oh, man. Oh, by the way, um, you can see me this and every Wednesday night at the Blue Lagoon Pub. Karaoke starts at 10. It's a fun time, you should come on down. I'll be by the bar, having a Pepsi. And if you wait around long enough, you'll find me twitching in the fetal position. I can't take that shit no more. So did you guys have a good weekend? Good weekend here, yeah? yeah. Uh, mostly it was just sitting there, oh, I can't wait for Tuesday night for that fucking graduation show. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you guys had a good weekend. Mine sucked. I went to a fucking wedding. And man, I, cannot, I gotta tell you, I can't stand them. It's the same shit. Every single wedding you go to, you get all dressed up, you, 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 you listen to the same songs you heard at the last fucking wedding. <laughs> you, you eat a little shitty piece of salmon, have a few watered down drinks, drop a couple hundred bucks on two people you barely fucking know. <laughs> and then you go home and count down until they get divorced. <laughs> that ain't right. Now that's the most horrible part about it. You know they're gonna get divorced. You know, there ought to be a law. And I promise you, when I'm elected president in 2008, this will be my first order of business. Hey. 
If that little reincarnation of fucking Napoleon could do it twice, I could fucking do it once, man. <laughs> and folks, if you don't believe that Bush is the reincarnation of Napoleon, ask him to speak some French for you. It's gotta be better than his fucking English, man. <laughs> to that guy, man. We're gonna get the terrorists where they hide and smoke them out. We're we'll getting running. Then we're gonna bring swift justification on. <laughs> Guys, out of his fucking mind. Well, you know what? I, I guess it's better than Kerry, though, right? That guy just plain scared the shit out of me. I don't know what the hell he was. He was like the love child of Herman Munster and B. Arthur. <laughs> I guess we know who was buried in Grant's tomb after all, huh? This guy was fucking scary as hell. But anyway, getting back to my law. You pass a law that says if you want to get divorced, first, you have to give all the money back to everybody that was at your wedding. Everybody gets their money back. Everybody. Even that drunk uncle that shit himself doing the Macarena. Yeah, he's doing the Macarena during the fucking wedding vows. Yeah, him. He gets his money back, too. I guarantee you, you know what happened? The divorce rate in this country would go down to practically nothing. More people would want to save their marriage. Of course, suicide and homicide rates might go through the fucking roof. <laughs> I guess it's a trade-off, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm just bitter. Do I, do I come off bitter? Do I seem a little bitter? No? Yeah. Yeah, well, thanks. <laughs> My brother in the crowd, folks. I don't know. I mean, I think one of the great voices of my generation said it best. Kurt Cobain. When he said, ch -ch -ch <laughs> Fucking chicks, man. Let me ask you something. If men are from Mars and women are from Venus, then how come every bitch I meet is from Planet Ballbuster? What the fuck is that all about? I mean, they're a real pain in Uranus, you know what I'm saying? That <laughs> pain in Uranus. Like my girlfriend, always nagging me, always bitching and moaning. Ah, show me some more affection, show me some more attention. So I said, uh, hey, how about some anal? <laughs> hey, I made sure my ass was squeaky clean that day, baby. Because that's the kind of guy I am. Hmm. Now, ladies, I admit, I am a bit of a handful. I do admit, I am a bit of a handful. Uh, most of you will probably need two hands. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> I know, a little too cocky for you, right? <laughs> you betcha. <laughs> hey, speaking of genitalia, did you know that a hermaphrodite can actually impregnate itself? Is that the, I mean, the most fucked up thing you've ever heard of in your entire life? Actually impregnate itself. I wonder what those hardcore pro-lifers think about that little bundle of fucking joy, huh? Yeah. Hey, here's something you can try. Instead of a birthday card this year, send all your right-wing hardcore pro-life friends and family a card nine months before their birthday that just says, Happy Conception Day. See if they know what you're talking about. Hey, they should appreciate that, right? To them, life begins at conception. And trust me, folks, nothing brings a smile to the face like the mental image of your father slamming mommy into the headboard. <laughs> Go get it, daddy. <laughs> Woo, let it play a play. <laughs> Hi, Ma. I thought you weren't coming down tonight. <laughs> At least I didn't get into that uh, Oedipus Complex problem I had, remember? Uh, sorry about that. But you know, folks, this is just some of the shit I think about at night when I'm in bed. Uh, I should probably stop having sex with my girlfriend first, though, right? Probably a good idea. Uh, she's a lucky girl. I'm a lucky guy, actually. I actually met my girl at church, of all places. And uh, I have a couple of problems with the Catholic religion, if you couldn't imagine. Here's my problem. You walk into the church and they say, please stand and then sit and then stand and sit and kneel and stand and put your head in your ass. Why can't they, why can't they just come up with one position for us to be in for the entire time? What the fuck? It'd be a much more enjoyable experience. I mean, the priest gets to be in one position, right? Doggy style. 
Oh, you're right. What am I thinking? That's later on in the confessional. Oh, that's my bad. Well, that's one great thing about the Catholic religion, though. Confession. This is great. You could fuck up your entire life and the lives of others around you and just tell the priest you're sorry and uh, all's forgiven. I think it's the priest that should be apologizing to us. What do you think? They've been a little bit naughty lately, huh? Fucking bastards, man. I'm telling you, I can't take them. But like all good things, folks, confession does have its bad part, and that's penance. And penance is basically, the priest will give you a couple of different Catholic prayers to say about 10 or 20,000 fucking times. Why is this? We're praying to God, right? This is God. Why are we repeating ourselves to God? Does he have some kind of short-term memory problem that we weren't fucking aware of? <laughs> Maybe some kind of hearing disability that uh, we weren't told about in Sunday school? I mean, halfway, halfway through, even he's gonna be like, holy shit, shut the fuck up! <laughs> Jesus Christ! Here, drink this Kool-Aid. Thanks guys, you've been great. I appreciate you coming down, thank you very much. <laughs>